Tennessee's Wild Side is produced by Rockwater TV with support from Tennessee State Parks, the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, the Nature Conservancy, and the Jackson Foundation. Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. Honeybees are often referred to as a keynote species. As they go, so go the animals, and no one watches the plight of these pollinators more than the American farmer. It was the early European settlers who first brought honeybees here with the hives strapped to the back of their ships. So they're not even a native species, but they're here and we are dependent on them. And as more people move to the cities, there's a growing need for urban bees. We're going to smoke them just a little bit to calm them down. Just a little bit of smoke there. On the south side of the city, state employees at Ellington Agricultural Center serve under the direction of Tennessee's governor. But on these 200 acres here in Nashville, there are also thousands of European honeybees huddled in six full-size hives working to please a queen. Let's see if we can find some honey here. Fenced for safety and tucked away in a quiet corner on the state's property, the apiary was built by the Nashville Area Beekeepers Association in exchange for honey. Okay, let's go on in. But it's also a chance to showcase what's being done about the three decade long decline in bee populations and a way to recruit All new right. beekeepers. This is a frame in the upper part of the uh, hive. It's used for food storage. This particular frame, the bees are storing nectar and converting it into honey. Situated next to the bee yard is an actual example of what can happen to wild bees. This 2,000 pound exhibit was once growing 20 feet off the ground. It's from a tree that died right next to President Andrew Jackson's uh, tomb at the Hermitage and they were afraid that the tree was going to fall on, the, on his tomb. So they cut it down. We asked if we could have the section of the tree that had the bees in it and we brought that over here to uh, the Ellington Agricultural Center to let people see where a, and how a wild bee colony would live and be able to compare that with a, with a managed apiary like the one behind me. Although a special scope shows the bees are still active, their numbers are not near as good as those housed in the urban boxes. In effect, we're making them live in a more organized and more accessible home as opposed to a random freeform type of home. In the old days, uh, people would have to chop down uh, trees and would uh, literally split them open or would uh, put bees in hives made out of straw and they would burn the whole thing and let the honey drip out and killing all the bees and all of the honeycomb. So that's the way things used to be. Now we can remove those frames, take out the honey we want, put the frames back in and with minimal disturbance to the, uh, to the bees' house. The health and sustainability of bees is so important, the State Department of Agriculture has a bee biologist tracking wild and urban colonies. We've got bees in every major city across the state of Tennessee, right downtown. A lot of people don't even know they're there. I'm here to try and help keep the, the bees healthy in the state of Tennessee so that we have enough bees to pollinate our food so we have food so we don't have to buy our food from other countries or other states. How much would it cost if you had to buy an apple that was hand pollinated? That apple has 15 different blooms. That means it's got to be pollinated 15 different days. Each bloom, each flower on that tree has got to be hand pollinated 15 times. 15 days in a row to get an apple, to get the apples there. So how much would that apple cost if you had to pay somebody to do that? The director of a Nashville construction company and a Vanderbilt Medical Center biologist recognize the reality and step away from important work, volunteering to keep a regular check <laughs> on the urban bees buzzing around Centennial Park. So right now we have three hives and we started basically with one. Uh, so we're doing uh, really well and we're learning each uh, time we come out here how to manage the bees in this particular environment. Uh, 
A mid-morning rain shower catches everyone by surprise as employees from Hospital Corporation of America reserve part of the park to celebrate an anniversary. But just behind all the activity on a little island in the middle of the lake, urban beehives are hidden in plain sight. So this is a really unique urban uh, environment that we can interact with a lot of people while still keeping our bees in a really good safe environment so that they can flourish. But up above it all on the roof of the Music City Center in Nashville is the best bees eye view. They will tend to fly almost straight up from the hive, get up above treetop level, fly to wherever they're going, collect their food and then come back. So it's normal for them to fly high. In the shadow of the mighty Batman building, the Music City Center bees are surrounded by asphalt, concrete, and cars. But their success is a testament to the tried and true benefits of urban bees. The bees, when they go out foraging, will fly as far as three and a half miles as the crow flies in one direction, collect food, and then fly back with food equal in weight to almost their own body weight. So what happens is that each hive can potentially cover most anything that blooms within an area of about 8,000 acres. So getting up to the fourth floor and existing in an urban area is not that big a problem. An entire team of trained beekeepers looks after the colorful hives, keeping a constant check on the current condition of the four colonies. We do have larvae which means there's an active queen. The Music City Center roof, designed to represent the hills of Tennessee and subsequently able to trap rainwater for use throughout the building, is all part of a mission towards sustainability. It's part of the community, so we want to be good stewards to the land, the sea, the community, uh, to ourselves, to our clients, and to obviously uh, the people that we serve. As part of that grand plan, the center's lead chef is a strong and influential voice for the advocacy of urban bees. We thought that the roof was the best place, uh, especially in that corner. And we have a viewing window that's available for our guests to see where the beehives are and when our chefs maintain them with the bee team to see how they work on it and so on. This is a once a year event and it's all hands helping as the honey harvest begins under the chef's watchful eyes and careful supervision. It is with this honey that he and his staff will make some of their most exquisite gourmet meals. We use a lot of honey in our desserts. So we do a pecan and a chocolate mousse with a little bit fresh uh, honey on it. We do a peach tea barbecue chicken, for example, and we serve that up to 5,000 people. There are several more sticky steps on extraction day before the Music City Center honey will end up on a plate or in a specialty jar. Since the sun went away with the earlier rain showers, the honey is heated in large commercial ovens, then scraped into a centrifuge where it is filtered. They are so successful, about 89 pounds is harvested. Even so, as you might imagine, they use much more, serving thousands of meals in a day. We work directly with the beekeepers and get honey for, because our center doesn't produce enough honey for what we do every year. But we wanted to keep that very important stage of being able to work with the bees and keep awareness of the bees alive and well at the MCC. Bragging rights typically go to those with the largest honey production, as any money made by urban hives may only come close to offsetting the expense. But there's the greater good in just knowing you have helped. Recent research showed that bees will fly a maximum of eight miles to get to food. So if you're within eight miles of a crop field, you can be getting, you can be benefiting that farmer. Well on the way and yet years from where the Beekeepers Association hopes to be, they continue urging others to consider the contribution of urban hives. Even with the improvement in the past few years in the number of bee colonies in our state, there's still far, far too few to effectively pollinate all, all the crops. What this does is this causes the cost of farming to go up substantially. The keepers of the honey crop enjoy the fruits of their labor and are always willing to pass on the wisdom to anyone willing to host a hive. We're gonna put this hive back together. We'll be ribbing the girls. Keep them nice and calm. 
I'm Annette Noel Hall on the Wild Side. They harvested more than 80 pounds of honey at the Ellington site and about 70 pounds at Centennial. And because of better education, more public awareness, and especially backyard beekeepers, bees are on the rebound. But biologists tell us that since one third of everything we eat is dependent on honeybees, we can use even more bees in urban areas. Tennessee's Wild Side is produced by Rockwater TV with support from Tennessee State Parks, the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, the Nature Conservancy, and the Jackson Foundation.